This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 494, The Three Levels of Financial Independence, Because Money is Only Part of the Equation, Part 1, by Sam of FinancialSamurai.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dan. I'm here each weekday reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And before we get to our Thursday post, thanks so much to Health IQ for sponsoring this episode. Health IQ uses science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for health-conscious people, including runners, cyclists, strength trainers, vegans, and more. To see if you qualify, get your free quote today at healthiq.com slash finance, or mention the promo code finance when you talk to a Health IQ agent. For now, let's hear today's post as we optimize your life. The Three Levels of Financial Independence because money is only part of the equation. Part one, by Sam of financialsamurai.com. Reaching financial independence is the holy grail of personal finance. But what does financial independence really mean? In this post, I'd like to determine the various levels of financial independence. That's right, even in financial independence, there is no one size fits all, since everybody has a different desired standard of living. Contrary to what you may think, Financial independence is not all about having enough money to cover all your expenses and then some. Financial independence also means being able to overcome your psychological fears to truly live free. For example, I have peers who have millions in net worth, yet still make their respective spouses work because they do not feel 100% financially secure. Common reasons include the need for healthcare coverage or their spouse's love for their job, even though they'd rather be doing something else. Here are the three levels of financial independence I've come up with. All three levels of financial independence should meet the following basic criteria. One, no need to work for a living because investment income or non-work income covers all living expenses into perpetuity. Or two, net worth is equal to or greater than the number of years left in your life times living expenses. For example, three million with 30 years left to live is FI if your living expenses are no more than $100,000 a year. Budget financial independence. If your household income is less than $40,000 a year, you are considered a lower middle class. Don't be offended, it's just a definition based on millions of data points. The current official poverty threshold is an income of 25,000 per year for a family of four and 19,000 for a family of three. If you are happy with living a lower middle class lifestyle, then you would need between 800,000 and 1.6 million in investable assets returning 2.5 to 5% a year to replicate the $40,000 in gross annual income. Of course, if you've been investing in the bull market for the past 10 years, you've likely seen a higher return than 5%. But over the long run, it's best to stay conservative since downturns do happen. Given the 10-year bond yield is at 2.5%, everybody should make at least 2.5% a year on their investable assets risk-free. If you're losing money during your financial independence years, you haven't been investing properly. This category of financial independence is interesting because there's a lot of trade-offs the individual or couple still make, such as making one spouse work in order for one spouse to live the FI life, moving to a lower cost area of the world instead of living where most of your family and friends are, downsizing to a small rental, small house, or even an RV or van, Delaying or not having children, which can really hurt the FI budget. Taking on a part-time job. Aggressively working on your side hustle or passion project. Or constantly telling other people how much you're worth due to insecurity. The question many people have in this stage is therefore, are you really FI if you've got to do one or many of these things? Many who work a day job argue no, but it doesn't matter because nobody can tell you how to live your FI life. If you don't have to work a full-time job and can cover your expenses, you are budget FI as far as I'm concerned. Budget financial independence is where I found myself between 2012 and 2014. I was earning about $80,000 in passive income, which was more like 40,000 since I lived in San Francisco and had negotiated a large enough severance to last for five to six years of living expenses. Even with these numbers, I was still afraid that I had made the wrong choice leaving a job at 34. As a result, I tried to sell my house and downsize by 70%, but nobody wanted to buy my house in 2012, thank goodness. Further, my wife and I agreed that she would work for three years until she turned 34, hooray for equality, to give us enough time to figure out whether we could both leave the workforce. At the end of 2014, she negotiated her severance as well before her 34th birthday. Baseline financial independence. 
the median household income in the United States is roughly $60,000. $60,000 is therefore considered a comfortable middle-class income for most Americans. If you didn't have to work for your $60,000 a year income, then life should be better, maybe even fantastic. Based on a conservative 2.5% to 5% annual return, a household would need investments of between 1.2 and 2.4 million to be considered financially independent. Once you've got at least 1.2 million in investable assets and no longer want to work again, I don't recommend shooting for an overall return much greater than 5%. You can carve out 10% of your investable assets to go swing for the fences if you wish, but not more. There is no need since you've already won the game. Remember, once you've reached financial independence, you no longer have to save. Everybody striving for financial independence tends to save anywhere from 20% to 80% of their after-tax income each year on top of maxing out their pre-tax retirement accounts. Therefore, if you're able to 100% replicate your gross annual household income through your investments, you're actually getting a raise based on the amount you are saving each year. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled The Three Levels of Financial Independence Because Money is Only Part of the Equation by Sam of FinancialSamurai.com. And once again, a big thanks to Health IQ for sponsoring this episode. Health IQ is using science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for health conscious people, including runners, cyclists, strength trainers, vegans, and more. 56% of Health IQ customers save between 4 and 33% on their life insurance. They're able to do that because physically active people have a 56% lower risk of heart disease, 20% lower risk of cancer, and a 58% lower risk of diabetes compared to people who are inactive. So just like saving money on your car insurance for being a good driver, Health IQ saves you money on your life insurance for living a health-conscious lifestyle. To see if you qualify, get your free quote today at healthiq.com finance or mention the promo code finance when you talk to a Health IQ agent. And that's it for today's episode. I will be back with you tomorrow to finish up this post and the week. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.